Hey guys, how's it going? Derek Craig here with another oilfootbasics.com video blog. Today I want to try and tackle the question that I got is actually commented on another one of our YouTube videos and the, the guy basically just asked, you know, where am I going to live um, if I'm a petroleum engineer? Where am I going to live and am I going to be away from my family? Am I going to be on some remote <laughs> desert island or, you know, what what's the deal here? Where am I going to be? What to kind of expect on that realm? So. We want to try and tackle that question here in this video today and it's going to be hard because there's no like solid easy answer to this. So a lot of it just comes down guys to what company you end up working for, what your role is and also um, I mean, in your job, I mean obviously what your job and what your role is but and also what you want out of it and that's one of the beautiful things about you know petroleum engineering is there's so many different options, so many different routes that you can go career wise. And if you're one that wants to go and travel and, and see different places and kind of live a little bit more remote and actually be hands-on with the jobs and the operations, you could totally do that. Um, or if you're more, uh, you don't like that kind of stuff, you like to always have a really good cell phone signal, you like to <laughs> be around family and friends all the time, um, then there's definitely ways that you can work in the city. Um, that's very common as well. So. I'll try and break some of this down for you guys just so it hopefully makes sense. And if you have further questions, feel free to drop them in the comments below. Let's start kind of breaking this down. So I guess there's kind of, I guess three kind of main categories that where I see a, um, a petroleum engineer potentially being able to work. So. First off, let's start with an office location. So an office location, um, let's say you're gonna be more on, um, let's say for example, you're working for an operator, okay? So you're working for an operator and, and if you don't know the difference between an operator and contractor, I have a video on that, so check that out. But um, let's say you're working for an operator and you're working in their corporate office, okay? So this is a lot of, there's a lot of these in Houston, uh, some of the other bigger cities, so there's some here in Denver. Um, there's Oklahoma City as, as Chesapeake I mean, and, and Devon. So there's, you know, there's these corporate offices all over, you know, a lot of big U.S. cities, um, even in California, there's some. So, I mean, they're all over the place. So if you're in that type of a role and that type of um, uh, a gig, you're probably working on a lot of the, you know, the engineering, um, the planning, the development, um, you're, you're kind of work. you're more on a corporate level, okay? So you're not really going to be going to the field as much, uh, but you're gonna be very well supporting the field, um, whether you're, you're, you have direct contact with those guys or whether you're more on the financial side and planning things, um, or even on, you know, the land and the permitting side. Um, I mean, you could, there's so many different uh, positions you can have that's the, kind of the corporate level that would be in a corporate office. Okay, so there's that option. Um, another option would be you know, a field office. So, you know, all those big companies, like I said, um, so I'll use the example of a couple summers ago when I was an intern, I worked uh, for Chesapeake out of, their, out of their field office in Catula, Texas, okay? Catula, Texas is a little south of San Antonio and basically between San Antonio and the Mexican border. So pretty much in the middle of nowhere, uh, there wasn't much to the town. Um, Saw some interesting things while I was down there. But anyways, so it's pretty remote. Um, so that's another example. So that would be a field office. So um, sometimes out of there, you'll feel, you'll find like production engineers or someone who's, who's pretty tied to the field who wants to be able to go out and actually, you know, be, you know, be there on site um, at times, but also has a little bit more of a, of a local engineering support kind of role. So um, they'll, they'll sometimes be placed in the field office. And like I said, those field offices can be remote sometimes. Um, but it is still less remote than uh, sometimes the next option. So the next option, next location I see a lot of uh, petroleum engineers working is actually on location. So on site, uh, you know, whether it's drill, helping to drill the well or complete the well, uh, whatever, uh, they're actually on location. Um, sometimes this is with an operator. So you might have someone who's uh, basically the company man uh, representing the operator. Um, sometimes uh, petroleum engineers are placed in that role. Um, obviously, um, it can be remote. So if for the example of being back in my internship in South Texas, those locations definitely, definitely, definitely were remote. Um, up here in Colorado, um, even the, the, you know, being on site where they're drilling or completing a well, 
you like always have suffered signal and you're always like, you know, you're, you're not out in the boondocks. Um, so it really depends guys on, on the situation, what company you're working with, what position you have and, um, you know, what you're looking for. And some of it differs too, if you're on, you know, the contractor side, if you're on the contractor side, let's say you're working as a frack engineer for Baker Hughes, um, you're probably going to be on site. Um, and what you're going to be doing is, is, you know, helping to, you know, see that the stages are, are, are pumped right and then basically what the customer wants and I mean so you're you're on site support basically um, making sure that everything goes smooth and also um, troubleshooting if need be so there's lots of different roles um, those would get you a lot of times if you're on the contractor side probably more likely to be on location um, but at the same time definitely on the contract side you also have those corporate gigs as well so someone's got to do the corporate sales, someone's got to, you know, do the de designs and the engineering behind, you know, the jobs. So there's lots of options, guys. And what I'm getting at is you can morph it to what you want. Um, so if you are that guy that just wants to live in Houston, uh, there's plenty of companies and positions that would let you do that. If you want to be um, a little bit less, uh, you know, not as big of a city, um, but also not like super remote, maybe it's a field office. Maybe you'll be placed in a field office um, kind of a, on, uh, still on as an engineering role, but um, you know, there's some companies and positions that would accommodate that. And then also, you know, maybe you want to be on site all the time. Uh, there's definitely a lot of positions that can accommodate that as well. Anyways, one thing that I haven't hit on yet either too, is that these can be international. So, you know, these same types of offices and locations exist on an international level as well. So if you are wanting to work internationally, that definitely exists as an opportunity. Um, as an engineer, it'll probably be harder to do right off the, the start of your career. Um, a lot of companies will have more of an age kind of requirement on that or years of service, just so they're not sending just anybody over to an international role. So, um, but those can come with lots of perks as well. So, and another thing I'll mention too, you know, these different locations, sometimes they come with completely different work schedules. Um, and I need to do a whole nother video probably on just kind of like lifestyle stuff, but you know, if you're in an office location, you're probably going to be working Monday through Friday, uh, maybe have every other Friday off or whatever uh, small twist of a schedule that they have, your, that specific company. If you're in the field office, um, probably, probably similar. Uh, but if you're on location, you're probably going to be doing something like rotational uh, work. So maybe two weeks on, two weeks off or some variation of an on and off shift. So lots of different options here, guys, for where you can live and, and work out of. And, you know, again, going back to the original question, will my family be there? Well, definitely they, they can be. Um, and I mean, if you're on location, if you're on the, if you're on the location, uh, it's going to be a little bit harder for you because you'll probably be staying either on site or in a local hotel. Um, and you'll probably be, you know, obviously, if you're working on location, that location is going to change all the time as you get one pad done and move to the next. So, um, but if you're at a field office or, an off, or a uh, corporate office kind of location, there ain't no reason why uh, your family uh, couldn't live, you couldn't live with them. So again, guys, you can morph this into what you want. So if you have any specific questions, drop them in the comments below. Hopefully the video wasn't too long. Hopefully it makes sense. Uh, it's definitely kind of a, a broad question. But anyways, hope this helps guys and we'll catch you in the next video. Thanks.